Hey everyone, good morning. I am Priyansh Agarwal and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now we are going to see the first question of today's weekly contest 439, which is find the largest almost missing integer. Okay, so let's see what is this question and how we can solve it. So in this question, we are given an integer L nums and an integer k. And integer x is almost missing from nums. If x appears in exactly one subarray of size k within nums, okay, and we need to return the largest almost missing integer from nums. And if there is no such missing integer, almost missing integer, then we need to return minus one. And what is a subarray? A subarray is a continuous sequence of elements within an array. So what we have been given in the question is a integer vector nums and an integer k. And you need to find an almost missing number from nums, and a number is almost missing when, when if it appears in exactly one subarray of size k of nums. Okay, so let's see. So let's start creating the subarrays of size three from nums. Okay, so the subarrays of size three can be three, nine, two, nine, two, one. 217, right? So, so there can be three subarrays. This one, this one, and this one of size 3. Okay. So let's see. 3 occurs in how many subarrays? In this. Okay. 3 occurs in only one of the subarrays. So 3 can be one of the almost missing integer. Okay. Let's see 9. 9 occurs in this also and this also. So this can't be an almost missing integer. So let's see 2. 2 occurred in this, in this, in this as well, in this as well. So this also can't be a missing integer. Let's see 1. 1 occurred in this and this as well. So this is also not a missing number. 7. 7 occurred in this only. Oh. So 3 and 7 can be the possible almost missing numbers. But you need to return the largest almost missing integer. So you will return the maximum of them, which is 7. And 7 is our answer. Okay. But like this is the thing which our question is asking. But the point is how we can solve this question to get our almost missing integer. Okay, so let's see. Let's take this example. 397, 397, 217. Okay. But like in generally, the k can be either 0. Let's see the constants. Can k be 0? No. K can be up to from 1 to nums dot length. Okay, so k can't be 0, so k can be 1, n, or between 1 and n, right? Okay, so let's see all these three cases. So when k is equal to 1, k is equal to n, and k is greater than 1 and less than n. Okay, so we need to solve this question on these three cases. Okay, let's start creating all these arrays when k is 1. So, the all these arrays are 3, 9, 7, 2, 1, and 7. Right? Okay, now let's start creating all these arrays when k is n. That is 3, 9, 7, 2, 1, and 7. There can be only one subarray when k is n. Okay, so as the k was 4 in this question, so let's create the subarrays when k is 4. Okay? So, 3, 9, 7, 2, right? Yes. 9, 7, 2, 1. Yeah. 7, 2, 1, 7. Okay. Now, let's see how we can solve this question. So, what we can do? So, let's say we need to return the almost missing number when k is equal to 1. So, the, what will be the almost missing number when k is equal to 1? You can see, like, uh, the number whose frequency is 1. The maximum number whose frequency is 1 will be the almost missing number. Okay, first let's create a frequency map as well. So, which will store the frequency of all the numbers of this index, of this vector. So, 3 comma 1, 3 is occurring one time only, 9 comma 1, 7 comma 2, 2 comma 1 and 1 comma 1. Cool. Okay. So, so what can, can be the almost missing number when k is equal to 1? So if each subarray contains only single element, then a maximum number can be the almost missing number. 
but the maximum number, the frequency of maximum number should be only one. Okay, because if a number is maximum and its frequency is also one, and the size of square is also one. Then obviously it can occur only in one survey. It cannot occur in any of other surveys. So when k is equal to one, so what we need to return maximum number whose frequency is one with frequency one. So here the maximum number with frequency one is nine. So in this case your answer will be nine, right? Okay. So let's see the case when k is equal to n. Okay, okay, so in this case, what will be our answer? What will be our almost missing integer? So every element is occurring in only one survey. When k is equal to n, then there can be only one survey. And in the question, you have been given that almost missing number occurs in exactly one survey. So if there is only one survey, and you need to return the maximum almost missing number. So what you just need to return, you just need to return maximum number. Unless its frequency is one, two, or anything, you just need to return the maximum number because every element of this array is occurring only once in each survey. So you just need to return the maximum number, and it will be the maximum almost missing number. Okay. Now let's talk about the case when k is greater than one and less than n. Okay. So in this case, all the middle elements, excepting the zeroth element and the last element, will occur in more than one survey. Is that is for sure, right? Because the size of survey is greater than one and less than n. So let's say three, nine, two, seven, one, seven, or anything. So if the size of survey is greater than one and less than n, so just let's say each side is two. So obviously nine is occurring in three this survey as well, and this survey as well. Two is occurring in this survey as well, and this survey as well. So excepting the n elements, all the elements will occur in more than one survey, right? Okay, so we know that our answer is going to be either three or seven in the case when k is greater than one and less than n. Okay, but how will we get to know what to take from three and seven? So we need to first check for their frequency. Okay, so let's see. We can't return maximum of them directly because see here in this example, seven, the frequency of seven was two. Okay, so it was occurring more than one time instead of it being an n element. So we can't simply return the maximum of nums of zero and nums of n minus one. We need to check for their frequency. If, if the frequency, frequency is one, only then we can return the maximum of them. If frequency of both these elements is one, then we will simply return maximum of them. Otherwise, we will check the frequency of both the elements. And the element whose frequency is one, we will simply return that element. Otherwise, if we will simply return one. As you can see in this example, the seven was being an end element, but its frequency was greater than one. So, so it was occurring in more than one survey, and three being an n element and its frequency was one. So it was occurring in only one survey. So that's why we have written three. But let's suppose three has also occurred more than one times in this survey. In this survey, let's suppose three, nine, three, seven, two, one, and seven. And k was four. Then three has occurred in this survey, in this survey, in this survey. Then three has occurred in these three surveys. So we will not return three. We will go into return simply minus one in that case as well. Okay, cool. So let's try code this. So in, we need to solve this question for three cases. K equals to one. K equals to n. K is greater than one and less than one. Okay. So let's try code this approach. So what we need to do? We will simply. I first we will create an unordered map. Which will store the frequency of all the elements of our num. For n i equals to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus map of nums of i plus plus. Good. Now we need to find the maximum element and the maximum element with frequency one. So let's suppose max element equals to minus one, 
max element with frequency 1 is also equal to minus 1. Ok, now let's start iterating in our map and if our frequency is 1, then what we need to do? We need to update our maximum element with 1 frequency. So maximum of maximum element with 1 frequency, comma it dot cos and 1 element 1, we need to just find the maximum element for this case of k equals to n. Maximum of max element from it dot first. Cool. Now what we need to do? If k equals to equals to 1, then what need we need to do? We need to simply return the maximum element with frequency 1. Okay, cool. So we will simply return max element with frequency 1. Else if k equals to equals to n, we need to simply return maximum element. Else if k is greater than 1 and less than n. So what we need to do, we need to check for frequency of nums of 0. If they both are 1 and then map of nums of n minus 1, then what do we need to do? We need to return maximum of both of them. Otherwise, if nums map of nums of 0 equals to equals to 1, otherwise we will return the element whose frequency is 1. We will simply return nums of 0 as if map of nums of z n minus 1 equals to equals to 1, then we will return nums of n minus 1, otherwise we will return minus 1. Okay, let's try on this. Mm, what I have done wrong here is, yeah, yeah so this is, I am also comparing it with 1. Yeah, let's try on this again. Yeah, it's working fine. Let's try something it. Now, uh, what happened? Yeah, it was expected to be z minus one. What? Uh, no, it was ex it was expected to be zero. What minus minus one? Uh, okay. Oh, so I'm not as it return here. Yeah. yeah. So let's try running on this test case. Just see mistakes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So let's try submitting it again. again. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's fucking fine. fine. So, so now, now let's, let's talk about this time and space complexity. So as we are just doing a single iteration on the uh, nums for storing all the elements in the map, and then one more iteration on the map, so we can say its time complexity is v of 2n. And its space complexity will also be v of n as we have used this map to store the frequency of all the elements. So yeah, this was all for this question. I hope you get it. But if you still have any doubts, then you can post in the comment section. I will surely try to answer them. Till then, bye. See you in the next video.